Hi, I am Jennifer Purcell, and welcome to my podcast, Living with an Invisible Learning Challenge, where we will discuss, discover, and learn more about the challenges and triumphs of those with NLD and other learning challenges. I do have a website for this podcast, and it is called livingwithnld.com. I also have a Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter account for the podcast. They are all under the same name, which is Living with NLD. I also have a YouTube channel for the podcast, which can be found by Googling the title of the podcast, which is Living with an Invisible Learning Challenge. I would like to tell you about a nonprofit that I use for my research for this podcast. It is called The NBLD Project, and I use their blog for my research. They are a nonprofit that is based in New York and is trying to get NVLD back on the DSM, and they provide many resources for people with NVLD on their website. I'll provide you with the website for them in the podcast description. All proceeds from the ads on this podcast will be donated towards the NVLD project. Please feel free to explore the other topics on the podcast, and hopefully you will learn something new from them. I hope you enjoy today's episodes. Hello there. So today's interview will be with Oscar and me, and Oscar is one of the NVLD Project Social Ambassadors. He was diagnosed with NVLD at the age of nine, and he is 22 years old, and he lives in London, and he is a teaching assistant. And um, I will include the link to his bio that he has on the NVLD Project page and um he um the interview with him was really fun and being able to talk to him about his life within VLD and what it's like for him to be an ambassador and a, a teacher assistant and um he went to West Hertz College and um he really likes the Big Bang Theory um and, um, yeah, so I hope you enjoy this interview. Um, I'm going to cut it into, uh, two parts so that it's not so long of an episode for you. So this will be the first part for the interview today. I also want to mention to you that I just launched my podcast swag on Wednesday of this week and have a page for it on my website and I will also send you the link to it in the podcast description and I will also send it to you in the newsletter that I usually send on out on Fridays. I am now selling t-shirts, water bottles, and a backpack and they all have the podcast logo and title on it and the tagline. So I am looking forward to watching the sales and seeing who buys them and um, spreading the word more about my podcast. And today I am very excited to announce that BetterHelp is now sponsoring this podcast. I have had seven years of therapy, so I know it can help change your life if you not only let it, but work on the personal goals that you set with your therapist. Without a healthy mind, being truly happy and at peace is hard. The good news is therapy works. But what is therapy exactly? It's whatever you want it to be. Maybe you're not feeling motivated right now and would like some tools to help. Or maybe you're feeling insecure in relationships at work, not dealing well with stress. Whatever you need, it's time to stop being ashamed of normal human struggles and start feeling better because you deserve to be happy. And now you don't have to worry about finding an in-person therapist near you to help. Better help is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist. 
so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's more affordable than in-person therapy and you can start communicating with your therapist in under 48 hours. Join the millions of people who are seeing what online therapy is really about. It's always a good time to invest in yourself because you are the greatest asset. And special offering to listeners of Living with an Invisible Learning Challenge. You can get 10% off your first month of professional therapy at betterhelp.com slash I'll put in the link in the podcast description for you. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-E-P. Thanks again to BetterHelp for supporting, I mean, sponsoring this podcast. Good morning, and I hope you are enjoying the new podcasts that I created, which again, if you haven't heard of them, one of them is called Chiro, Be Your Own Hero, and that one was about heroism and inspiring yourself to be your own hero in your life instead of trying to look for others to be your hero or mentors. And then the second one is called Think Out for Your Imagination. And that one is about the imagination I had when I was growing up and how I imagined that I could fold up my house into pocket size and take it with me wherever I wanted. And then the next one is Chats, Barks, and Growls, Combos with Your Pet. That one is probably the most fun one because I get to do my voice. And I get to do Truffle's voice. And just, you know, uh, tell you what I think dogs think throughout the day and um, what they think about their owners so that that one's fun for me. Fun for me. All right. Good. Good afternoon. I am here with Oscar, who has NLB, and he is also an ambassador for the NBLD project. And I would like to start with having him introduce himself. Hi, I'm Oscar. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, and yeah, I have an NBLD nonverbal uh, learning disability. So, where are you from? Uh, I am from London, England, uh, and I am 22 years of age, um, and I have, uh, I was diagnosed with NVLD at the age of nine. All right, I am from uh, California, and I was diagnosed with NLD when I was 19 in college, and um, do you have a full-time job also? Yeah, I'm I'm a I'm a teaching assistant at a secondary school. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Do any of your students have learning disabilities? So I work in in the special educational needs department. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I uh, I work I've been working with kids with learning difficulties for about uh, about a year now, um, and uh, I feel. Uh, I can really empathize with them mm-hmm. because I have a learning difficulty myself. Of course, yeah. I I worked a little bit with uh, children and adults with autism in the past, and I remember being able to empathize with them as well and be able to um, just feel like a connection with them because of, like you were saying, because of having a learning disability and being able to know what that's like. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I have a question that, that is about uh, being an ambassador. Why, what made you ch- choose that? Uh, to, to, to be honest with you, so back in February, um, at my previous school I was working at, I was looking to, le- uh, looking to leave teaching because mm-hmm. the school I was in, I was not happy. Mm. So I thought, okay, is there a job like with NVLD? something mm-hmm. to be with NVLD and um my so I was like just I was searching and I found the NVLD project and I was like huh okay they're based in, in, in America but that's okay I'm sure some of you like that so so I emailed them I was like hey do you guys have a job <laughs> and um 
they reply back to me and say, look, sorry, we, we can't offer you a job, but you can work for us and be an ambassador. I was like, yeah, you know what? That sounds really awesome, actually. I, mm-hmm. I you know, I've, I've tried sharing my experience of NVLB online before, and I've got some stuff out there, but you know, this, this, this could be good. This could be a good way to do it. And, um, you know, I, I signed up for it. I, uh, I'm a bit behind on my blogs, but, um, yeah, I, I really enjoy writing for them. It's it's really cool just to have a platform dedicated to like people with NVLD. I find that a really uh, unique idea. Yeah, I agree with you. It is really unique, mm-hmm. and it's it. I can understand, you know, juggling the blogs while you with your job, and you know, trying to yeah. have time to do them. And um, it's it's really cool though because with NLB. Um, you have so many topics to blog about. So yeah. it's not hard to think about one. <laughs> um, <laughs> do you remember one that was a blog that was particularly hard for you to write about? Um, I think probably, um, I mean, as I said, I, like, I'm really behind, but I think that, mm-hmm. like the, the, the introduction one was hard at like the first blog because as you just said, there's so much to write about. So it's right. like, where do you start? And I just took the approach of, well, let's just like, let's introduce myself sort mm-hmm. of thing. Like, let's, let's introduce me. And, and then, you know, as time goes on, I have, because I have loads of things I can talk about. So that's not all, you know, if I cram it all into one blog, it's going to be a waste. <laughs> so right. I sort of just, I uh, I took the approach of you know let's just do an introductory one and just let people read about me and get to know me, and you know we'll we'll go from there. That makes sense. Um, I think for me one of the hardest ones might have been um, one of the things I talk about on my podcast is um, how for me I have NLD but I also have chronic migraines, so how it ha- it's like to have core morbidity. And I wrote a blog on that and I was trying not to focus too much on migraines because I know that other people with NLB have other challenges as well. So I was trying to be like, hey, this is what I experience, but you might experience something different because you could have autism, NLB or something else like ADHD. Um, So Another thing that I was going to ask you is um, sometimes people know this, but they don't always. Do you know what might have um, caused your NLD or like were you um, born with it or? W- without going to too much, I was, I, I was born quite late. Mm. So, um, so my mom's pointed that out to me a lot. Uh, but, you know, the... For, at least not that I can remember. My, the, you know, the doctor that diagnosed me never brought that into account. Never, mm-hmm. or actually, was, I, I don't think he knows. But um, maybe one day I'll ask him and just see if, it, if there's any sort of connection as to yeah. as to as why I have it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, there there could be. I mean, I know for me, I was I was a little curious about why I had it at the beginning. Um, I. Uh, they said I was most likely born with it um, when I was done with the testing. Um, And I guess for me, um, that made sense because my dad is adopted. And I was thinking, well, since we don't know much about his side, maybe it came from his family. Um, And uh, because I have an LD, I can't help but sometimes see some characteristics in him that are like NLD. Yeah. Um, so it's like, you know, it's hard not to see that. Um, also, do you know how you feel about having NLD? I mean, is it okay? Yeah. I mean, you know, <laughs> there are, there are periods of frustration, mm-hmm. um, you know, where it's like, oh, like, because I don't know about yourself, but for me, there, there are times where I wonder, like, what if I didn't have it? Like, right, yeah. You know, would this affect how I am socially? Because I'm mm-hmm. social. 
would this affect how I do in maths? Because maths is a real big weak spot for me. Mm -hmm. Stuff like that. So it, it, they can be periods of frustration. Um, but I think it's it's one of those things where like, you know, I have it, I've admitted it, I own it basically. Um, so I, I kind of not to dwell on like what ifs because like nothing can really change. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, that, that's a good point. Like you can only work so hard on your challenges and try to make them easier if, if you can. But yeah. sometimes you can't. Like I know some people with NLD, uh, they one of the challenges is they can't drive or if they can it's so hard yeah for them to be able to um i'm fortunate that even though i do struggle with driving i can i can do it and um took me forever to learn though <laughs> um, <laughs> is that a struggle for you um i don't drive but i mean do you struggle with direction by any chance like finding direction? i do Okay, yeah. yeah, so I'm the same in terms of, um, like, for, I'll give you a quick example, mm -hmm. if that's okay. Sure. Um, in 2016, uh, so at that time, my mum was working in the centre of London, which is quite mm -hmm. busy, and uh, I'd never really met her for lunch before or anything like that, so, and at this point, I really didn't know my way around the centre of London that much, at least not by mm -hmm. myself. Mm-hmm. So my mom said to me, what if I send you screenshots of where to go, mm -hmm. like landmarks? Mm -hmm. I like, all right, go for it. So she would take, you know, on her way to work, she, send, she would take the pictures and send them to me via WhatsApp. Mm -hmm. And so, and it worked, except for this one time where, now I don't remember this happening, but my mom says it's happened. There was this one time where, so she sent me the screenshots and uh, in one of the pictures, there was a homeless man. Mm. So I get to the station and I'm looking for the homeless man. And he's not there. So I go, so when I get to the to my work to my mom's work, I was like, I said to her, again, I don't remember, I'm telling I'm telling you from what her, her recollection is. Mm -hmm. I said to her, um, the screenshot, you know, you messed up one of the screenshots. She's like, How? What, how did you get lost? I was like, there's no homeless man. <laughs> so <laughs> one of them things very literal very yeah literal. very literal i i can relate to that though i i not very good with direction either i remember one time when i was in college i went to uc berkeley and um i remember i was coming back from spring break and um i had gotten on the bus but i realized i got on the wrong bus <laughs> in the wrong direction <laughs> so I, when I got off the bus and I was going to take the correct one and I was going to look at my phone for um, the timing of the next one because I had an app for that, um, I realized, oh, I left my phone on the bus. Oh. <laughs> so long story short, I got it back because I called the lost and found. But that is definitely like a sense of direction where like I just was focused on getting the right bus and didn't realize that I left my phone until it was too late. <laughs> um, so we were talking a little bit about your challenges with NLD and my challenges. Um, you said that you struggle with math. You want to talk about that a little bit more? Yeah. Uh, so I struggled with math. I mean, that was kind of one of the uh, signals from my mom and dad to get me Sort of mm -hmm. tested for NVLD or well, not tested diagnosed really but um right uh like throughout my education uh I mean yeah throughout my education I, I struggled with maths I was in the special education needs department mm -hmm. and one thing I struggled with was time money time I'm okay with to be honest with you I'm all right with money still a bit of an issue um and uh, I mean, to this day, I'm okay. I mean, like, for example, you know, I work in a secondary school and, you know, my, I'm, I'm being taken out of maths. Mm -hmm. Fine. I'm okay with that. To be honest, I really shouldn't be put in. I mean, I had to be there for my kid, right? But at the same time, <clears throat> you know, they're doing, um, they're doing like fractions or just, they're going to they're gonna get harder. These lessons right. are going to get harder. 
Yeah. And, and the more hard they get, I'm going I'm not gonna be of any help. So therefore, I'm not doing my job. So I said to so my boss said to me, "Do you want me to take you out of mass?" I was like, "Yes, please." <laughs> <laughs> so they're gonna they're gonna take me out because, like I, I always said, like you know, I don't mind being in. Obviously, that's my job to be in lessons. You know, if you want me in maths strictly for behavior, fine. Mm-hmm. If you want me there to help my kid with maths, I can't do that stuff like that you know when I moved out of my mum's place in October 2020 Mm -hmm. you know you know rent gas stuff like that and uh you know luckily I I live with my older brother and he explained he he really Mm -hmm. I I don't know about yourself but I had to have it really explained it's written out yeah so that's how it's been and as I said you know my maths is is it great no is it okay yes uh, I I always say my maths is as good as it's gonna get. You mm-hmm. know, it, it, you know. Uh, my mom said to me like, "What if you had a tutor?" I was like, "Well, we tried that many years ago." And it, and on top of that, you know, I've got a job. I do other bits and bobs. I don't think <laughs> like you know, a tutor. That's another thing sort of added in my life. So you know, um, the maths. It is what it is. I can't change it. But it goes back to the topic we discussed earlier. You know, what if right. MDLD wasn't a factor? Would I still struggle? It's one of those what ifs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I agree with you. I struggle with math too, and I've gotten a lot better at it. But that's only because I've had tutors and I've had um, a lot of help from my friends and my family. And um, my brother helps me too. My older brother with math and um that's really helpful for me because like you i'm i'm good with uh doing the basic things in math but when it comes to finances i'm still struggling there too yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like trying to figure out <clears throat> how to balance everything um and um that can be challenging um do you remember what it was like when you were growing up with NLD since you knew about it when you were still quite young? I don't think I understood it yeah. <laughs> when I was younger. Mm-hmm. I don't think I got it. I just I just sort of was like, oh, all right. And then, uh, I mean, I had, like, you know, teaching assistants with me. You know, I mean, behavior-wise, that wasn't, it's not an issue. It was the academic side. And I was like, okay, I've got a TA with me. That's cool. I mean, in, in my first year of secondary school, I don't think I fully appreciated it because I remember thinking like, geez, like, I want independence here. Like, why is someone with me all the time? Mm. And then as time went on very quickly, you know, I began to realize like, hey, these, these people are here to help you. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't think, you know, it wasn't until I started growing up, like I would say maybe into like my late teens that I realized like, hey, you've got in BLD. And, you know, I think I have... I have a much better idea of it now. I think I understand myself a lot better than I did when I first got diagnosed. So yeah, Mm -hmm. I think when I was younger, I don't think I got it, uh, but now I do. Yeah, I can relate to that too, where I didn't know uh, in high school or middle school um, about it. I thought I was different because I always compared myself to my brother where it was easier for him to do math. It was easier for him to do um, writing essays. I have a challenge with that. And um, it, and like, it just, I never saw him in tears over math, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I couldn't help but compare myself to him. And um, like when I got into college, I realized that um, one of the challenges I had was managing my time on um exams that they gave me so trying to do it in and like if it was two hours that was tricky so I got extended time so that I could have more time to do it and that made me relax more and be able to um do it more easily um but yeah like you with when I was younger I don't when I first got diagnosed with NLD I don't think I fully appreciated what it meant and what it was. Um, I would think I was still trying to figure out my way through college and realizing when I graduated, I was like, okay, now it's easier and I'm able to um, 
navigate through it more easily. Um, it sounds like your family is supportive with your challenges as well. Yeah. Uh, you know, th I mean, I always, yeah, I mean, my mom, you know, when my dad was around, I, I, I think he got it. I, mm -hmm. I, it, was, it was always hard to tell. I think he got certain, I mean, one thing he said to me, which is really true. He, he, he said to me, he said, Oscar, you see things in black and white. Mm. Uh, and I think that's definitely true. I think my mum, I think my mum gets it a lot. I mean, she's, she, she was with me a lot through <laughs> the journey. Mm -hmm. um, so I think she understands it a lot, but I've always, I always think, and this is gonna sound a bit odd, but I always think the people that get me the best are my work colleagues. Mm. Um, Do you know why? I don't know. I mean, you know, before I started working at a school, I was working at a charity called Resources for Autism. Mm -hmm. And you know, I was looking after young children with you know, on the autistic spectrum. And I don't know, I think it's because I'm working with people who work with learning difficulties. And right. I think when they work with someone who has a learning difficulty himself, I think it just makes it easier for someone like myself to yeah. almost open up and mm -hmm. just and you know they're not going to judge you not that my family does judge me but you you know it's a lot easier you know they they under, I feel like they understand me a lot better sometimes than my mum would for example you know right um and my current colleagues saying the same the same here you know and I, I think that's one of it's that's it's like it's nice to be uh like you know the, the special educational needs department i'm in is co colleagues wise they're, they're lovely because mm -hmm. you know they it's almost like they just they get me you know and i think that's one of the best things you can ask for <laughs> when you have a learning difficulty yeah to, i get you yeah i agree with you on that and being able to have that kind of um feeling at work does make it easier i know for me i um I work and I live with my parents, so I have a, I have that, and um, I, I have had jobs outside working for them, but I realized that the reason it didn't work out for me was because nobody knew I had an oldie, and so they weren't able to help me with that. And while they would have definitely understood because of uh, being an organization that would help people with autism. Um, I, I didn't feel, I didn't feel quite comfortable at that point, um, explaining it to somebody else in the work world. Um, so it's just easier for me to work with my parents and my mom helps me a lot as well with challenges and, um, my dad does too, but I think it's, I think it's easier for my mom because she's done a lot of research and has learned a lot more about NLD, um, than than my dad has. Um, I mean, he's definitely learned about it, but he, he hasn't researched on it like she has. Yeah. Um, and so that, that can be a little different. Um, what else was I going to ask you? Do you feel like there's any um, like talents or things that come easy to you because of NLD? Uh, I mean, one thing with me is um, I can sort of, for example, I'm into video editing. Mm -hmm. So I can do that over and over and over again and not get bored. It's like when I watch, um, you know, I'm really into documentaries. So I can, watch, I can watch, I mean, it depends if I like it, but I can mm -hmm. watch the same documentary over and over and over again. It's not really a talent. Editing is more my talent. Um, but I'd say, yeah, being able to just edit like, over and over again and just sort of, you know, sometimes I need that break, but just yeah. trying to be a perfectionist. <laughs> um yeah i would say video you know apart from that yeah yeah that's about it yeah i i also like watching documentaries and i um i do a little bit of editing for the podcast and being able to um make it make sure that it's the sound quality is good and that it um is um flows nicely um, and I also have, I have a friend of mine who is a videographer, so I can understand some of the, um, 
editing aspects of that. Um, I think for me, I'm really good at um, memorizing things like yeah. lines in movies or song lyrics. And um, that's kind of fun because my brother is really good at it too, even though he's neurotypical. Um, and so it's kind of cool to, you know, go back and forth with him if we with a movie we both seen it. That's interesting you say that because I'm um, I can remember dates really well. Mm -hmm. And um, when my dad was around, I always like to freak him out. I, I used to like really freak him out with it. Because <laughs> I can I can remember certain things from like 2013, mm -hmm. and, he, and he'd look at me like, "All right, weirdo." <laughs> but that's like one. Of, you know, I don't know how, but it's like it's almost like it's in my brain, right. like, stuff like that. Yeah, I. I'm good with dates too. Like, I don't know, like an example, I don't know how I remember this, but I can remember the exact day I first tried putting um, contact lenses in. Okay. And um, like, I can remember very detailed, like what I was wearing and like yeah. what I was doing on yeah. that day. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> how do I do that? <laughs> um, so that's that's definitely de uh, an example of how detailed a brain can be when you have NLD and um, and how literal it can be. Like you were saying earlier with the black and white piece. Yeah. Um, is there um, when you think about the world and with neurotypicals and with neurodiverse uh, people mixed in? Is there anything you wish that they would know more about NLD? Uh, you know, I watched, um, I watched, I think it was done by the NLD project. There mm -hmm. was, they did this short film on this girl called, I think her name is Abby, I think. Mm -hmm. um, she had NVLD and she, she said a quote, which I really liked. She said, the one thing I wish people would know about NVLD is we don't mean to not understand what you're saying. Mm. And that's always kind of stuck with me. And I, I think that would probably be it is, you know, when you speak to myself, you, whoever may have it, you know, we don't, it's not a deliberate thing. It's not, we don't mean to make a mistake. You know, no one means to make a mistake, but you know, if we mess something up, it's not deliberate or, you know, I, I don't know about you, but, but for me, if I mess something up, I'm beating myself up over it because mm -hmm. it's, you know, because it's like, oh, like that should have been so simple. How did I mess it up? So yeah. I, I, I would say that it was just, we, we don't mean to not understand, you know, we're, we're still people, we mm -hmm. still have feelings, but I would just say like, give us a chance. Like, <laughs> like you know, right. give us a chance and the, um, just like get to know us first and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. I I can definitely, uh, I think that way too, like for me, um, I would agree with you on uh, getting to know the person more and trying to see uh, their challenges and understand them a little bit. And like you were saying, we don't make the mistake on purpose. It's just, it just happens. Um, and I know for me, I do beat myself up a lot too, probably too much when I make yeah. a mistake. Um, it, and especially like if I've made the same mistake before, <laughs> yes. like I thought I was getting better, you know, um, and I try to, I do try to think about it a little bit in terms of like, well, maybe I have gone better in some way, but there's still obviously room for imp improvement. Um, and just try to make myself a look, feel a little bit better and be like, well, okay. Yes, I made it again, but how can I improve even more, um, if possible? Because um, I know for me, if you think too negatively about something, it's not going to help. <laughs> no, it doesn't. You're right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> yeah. and it, it doesn't really help you, um, you know, let go of what happened and try to move on. Um, so I think you might have touched on this a little bit, but do you ever wish you didn't have an LD? Sometimes. 
Yeah. Sometimes, yeah. Because uh, it can be very frustrating, mm-hmm. you know. And when, you know, when I see, for example, my brother or my family and, you know, they're, you know, I've seen my, my brother and mom work out maths like that. Mm-hmm. I'm just thinking like, good Lord, like that's so frustrating. How do you do that? Right. <laughs> or, you know, like... Um, I went to um, Gibraltar back in November for mm-hmm. a filming gig and like having to just like you know the amount of like uh, anxiety I was having over this just in my head like like just like man I wish I could just go on a flight not worry mm-hmm. uh, you know I, I don't know about yourself but with me and NVLD there comes anxiety and you know it's like yeah I do wish like man like if I didn't have it, like, what would I be any, like, would I be, it's one of those what ifs, it, mm-hmm. for me, it's one of those what ifs, and so there is that frustration on my end a lot, um, so yeah, there's some, there's some points, especially, like, in my job, where, you know, where maths is, like, one of the, it's, like, a big subject, you know, and I'm basically admitting, like, hey, can't help so yeah there are times where i do wish yeah but uh it's again as i said earlier you can't change it right yeah i i definitely uh for me too like i see my my mom or my dad or my brother do math very quickly like you said and i know for me um like I've gone better at doing it quickly, but sometimes if my head hurts or if I'm just in a bad mood, I don't do it quickly. (laughs) Um, And I'm like, okay, well, that's just how it's going to be. And like, yeah, it is frustrating. And sometimes it can um, be a bit of a burden and um, be uh, challenging because you like you were saying, you do wonder if anything would be easier for you if you didn't have it or how it would be easier um, and in what ways. And I do get anxious too. So like for me, um, usually I get anxious in some social situations that might be new to me or like if I'm going to drive to a new place I haven't been to before, I get anxious because I'm getting lost and not knowing uh, how to find myself, um, find my way around. Um, like one of the things that, cause we were talking about direction before, um, I get really anxious when I go like in a mall because it's so easy to get, uh, like twisted around with all the buildings and trying to find where you want to go and find where you parked your car, or <laughs> where, yeah. you, where the exit is. Um, and it's, it's like when I've done that before, like even if I use a directory, I get lost. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know if you've had an experience like that. Uh, you know, I was talking about Gibraltar earlier, mm-hmm. and you know, one of the things that comes to mind is going to the airport because you know, I um I hadn't number one, I hadn't flown since 2013 <laughs> back mm-hmm. to the dating. Um, and another thing was this was the first time flying alone Mm, and you know first things first I overslept so automatically (laughs) in my head I am screwed um and it's just like okay step one you know step one get to the airport great done step two get you know get my passport you know I'm holding on my passport with dear life like like death and Today, I am very excited to announce that BetterHelp is now sponsoring this podcast. I have had seven years of therapy, so I know it can help change your life if you not only let it, but work on the personal goals that you set with your therapist. Without a healthy mind, being truly happy and at peace is hard. The good news is therapy works. But what is therapy exactly? It's whatever you want it to be. Maybe you're not feeling motivated right now and would 
like some tools to help. Or maybe you're feeling insecure in relationships at work, not dealing well with stress. Whatever you need, it's time to stop being ashamed of normal human struggles and start feeling better because you deserve to be happy. And now you don't have to worry about finding an in-person therapist near you to help. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist. So you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's more affordable than in-person therapy and you can start communicating with your therapist in under 48 hours. Join the millions of people who are seeing what online therapy is really about. It's always a good time to invest in yourself because you are the greatest asset. And special offering to listeners of Living with an Invisible Learning Challenge. You can get 10% off your first month of professional therapy at betterhelp.com slash I'll put in the link in the podcast description for you. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-E-P. Thanks again to BetterHelp for supporting, I mean, sponsoring this podcast. As I wrap up, there are some things I would like to share with you. I do have a website for this podcast. It is called livingwithnld.com. I also have a Facebook and Instagram page for this podcast. It is called Living with NLD. I will include the links for those in the description. In conclusion, I would like to hear from my audience. If you know individuals with NLD that I could interview for this podcast, please email me at livingwithnld at gmail.com. What are you interested in learning about NLD? I know I'm not an expert, but I do know I have the living experience of having it. I would like you to practice journaling about your gifts and differences. Also see if there is a way that you can make that difference become easier for you to do than it originally was. Thank you for listening today, and please go to my YouTube channel and subscribe to it. Thank you. Bye.